All right, what is up, my beautiful people? I am back for Buffs, Bluff City Law, episode eight. Um, what is, I forgot what it was called, but um, with this episode, oh yeah, if y'all don't watch my All City Rise video, a girl got her hair done and I like playing with it. So if you're distracted by me playing in my hair, I apologize, cause I'm gonna be running my fingers through it a lot, doing like this, I'm sorry. Um, what do we, okay, episode seven, like, at the very end, Emerson comes into Elijah's office, I believe, and tells him that his mom was coming to visit on Monday, you know, and so that's this episode with Emerson's mom. She's a three-star general, um, in the army, and she has another soldier with her he has a cane um and he's walking with a limp and they want them to not sue the army i think it was like a company that the army was working with with defective equipment because like they uh they were being shot at and i believe they called for help and they had to enter these coordinates and with them entering the coordinates um it fired on them, like the machine, whatever it is. It's, um, what do I want to say? Like they enter the coordinates to get help, I believe. And then it fires back on them and like blows them up. And the soldier that was with, uh, Emerson's mom, he said he lost four soldiers and, 16 were injured including himself and he was like he lost his what did he say he lost his leg and he lost his job and it's just not his because i got my tv on and it's distracting me um it's not his fault the company is to be blamed so i'm trying to go after that company the um defense If y'all can hear that, I'm sorry. That's distracting me now. It's cars outside. They're very loud. Um, what is it? The defense, the army's defense or whatever. Like, they basically shut them down. And it was just like, this is classified information. You guys aren't even supposed to be telling anybody about this. So, the um, judge that they were going to see to um, even get Emerson's, her, her name is Virginia, to get Virginia's testimony they shut that down. Like, basically, the case never existed. Y'all not talking about this no more. It's over with. It's done with. And so, um, <clears throat> Sydney, Sydney's having a hard time. Because it's just like, I have to look my dad in the face and watch how he interacts with her. And then also, like, you're, you're his mistress. Like, okay, yeah, you're my brother's mom and I'm just getting cool with him. But it's just like, you slept with my dad while he was married to my mom like y'all cheated together on my mom and I have to watch y'all interact so this whole episode it was hard for her and I I don't too much care for Sydney but I felt her in this episode because it's just like I'm not gonna watch y'all interact with each other and no it was awkward to watch because it's just like they don't know what to say to each other because she kept Emerson from Elijah for 20 years. It's just like all of a sudden she popped up at his door like, uh, you have a son. Here you go. And it's just like, wait, no, you. And like watching them interact, because I, I want to word this correctly, like watching them interact with each other, you can still see that there's something there they're just not pursuing it under the um, explanation of too much time has passed. And they were walking together, like on a pier talking, Virginia and Elijah. And it was like, I wish you would have told me so I could have helped you out sooner. And she was like, I had a child coming. I had my career. And the man that I loved was in love with somebody else. Like, what were you going to do? Leave your wife for me? No, that wasn't going to happen. And like, uh, some, some happened, but like Sydney caught it and she was like, you, 
you were in love with her. And it's just like, what, you were going to leave mom for her? And he was like, it never got that far. And she was, uh, what'd she say? And she was like, only because Virginia left. And it's just like, you could see that if, um, because they were working on a case together, like all those years ago. So it's just like, if they would have worked together longer and, uh, Virginia hadn't left, it's a possibility he could have divorced her mom and got with her. And, you know, I can see how that's playing in Sydney's head. Like you would have left us and you would have had like your, your own family. And I know in some ways she's tying that back to herself. Cause it's like, Emerson is your real kid. I'm not your daughter. I may call you dad, but you're not really my dad. So at some point you could have left us and it, it hurt her feelings. Like at some point in the episode, like, right when she said that, she was like, and the only reason it didn't get that far is because uh, Virginia left. So, you see her walking down the street, just <sighs> hyperventilating, just she's broken up about it. And then he walks past her office, I guess, to talk to her, and obviously she's not there. So, it's just like, it's a lot. But, come to find out the general who was on the defense team that was trying to get them to be quiet about this, he owned seven percent of the company and if you own i guess like more than five percent of any company it's public information but they didn't know about that so they got him on the stand and he would buy and sell buy and sell his part in the company and stephanie got him to admit it's just like you would sell when these explosions would happen but when they were covered up and nothing happened, like there was no repercussions for it, you bought your stock right back. So it's just like you knew that something was going on and you were trying to cover it. <clears throat> and so the defense like left him out to hang by himself. And uh, what was another thing? Like technically Virginia could have lost her job and like her, I guess her status, I think from telling them even the information that she told them because it was classified, but because come to find out there was something wrong, then they got to keep it. Also, in this episode, I had, because <clears throat> I felt Sydney, but my real thing was with Della, her son, and her daddy. Her daddy's funny, but her son, and kudos to Anthony, because um, his name, Eric, and it annoys me, because any variation of my name, like, if they're not a good person, it's just like, ugh, your name Eric. Um... He shows up while Della and Anthony are talking. And Anthony said, it's kind of late, Eric. Your mom's uh, gala ceremony was a couple weeks ago. And so Della's just like, Anthony. And it's just like, they can talk to your son. Like, you should want somebody to get your son together because they got your back while your son, like, I don't get, like, what is there to accept? Being gay is just a way of life. What do you need to accept about that? besides what people have told you about being gay and how it could be wrong and how it quote unquote messed up his life at 15. Um, so she go off to talk to him and come to find out her daddy, they own a liquor company. Like it's in the family name. Um, they make liquor, you know, got their own store brand. I said store brand, whatever. But, um, he, Eric is running in now, but the dad is still, like, he's undermining his authority. Like, he won't just step back and let Eric run it now. And so, uh, she goes to talk to the daddy, and he's, like, at an all-men's, uh, like, country club or whatever. And the man is following Della around. She's like, you know there's no women allowed in here. She's like, oh, shut up. And so, um, what did the dad say? The dad was like... So Eric go runs to his mommy to come talk to me or whatever. And so, what did she say? Like he sent her to law school to become a lawyer for the company, not to like actually be a lawyer in a law firm. And it's just like, um, what did she say? She said something, you know, like it being his legacy. And he was like, no, it's my legacy. It was supposed to go on to you and you could pass it on to him, but you broke the chain. And so he said he had some people coming down to like look at the company and he was going to sell it. 
And I was like, she ain't letting that happen because, uh, you know, she got dirt on him. So it ain't just like he could sell the company. So she went to his house and was like, you know, I'm giving you one last chance not to do this. Otherwise, um, I'm going to take you to court for, um, what is the word? Com competency. Ugh. I can talk, I swear. Competency. <laughs> um, you know, he got like two sets of books. So what is like on the record ain't really the record. And you done bought off a police for drunk and disorderly. So it's just like, you ain't so cut clean while you trying to sell the company and talking about who doing this and who doing what. And <laughs> it's just, it's a part in there where the daddy is like, look at you. Your son ain't like us, uh, steel spines. And he was like, divorced, lesbian. <laughs> it's like, he got a, um, a Southern accent, but it's just the way he say lesbian, lesbian. And he was like, that ain't even a problem because we've had queers in our families before. <laughs> He was like, but you want to be a lawyer. Like, he said it with disgust, like, lawyer. And it just cracked me up. And so, like, while they're talking about it, then he's like, um, okay, I'll draw the papers up in the morning, you know, signing it all over to him. Um, but I'm also rewriting my will, and you're being written out of it. And he was like, you are disowned. And she said, well, you are loved. And she just walked out. Who's styling auntie? I think I brought this up before. Who's styling auntie? Auntie Della looks a mess, especially when she at his house talking to him. And also, can I say, I don't like how he had like a, a black maid, you know, like a, it was a black man, but it's just like that Southern accent and having that black man as your uh, maid or whatever they're called. I ain't like that. But um, she got on this yellow coat with the collar turned up, but then got the nerve to have a scarf. Like, auntie, she always looking a mess. They need to style her better. Um, and I think that was the episode. They still working on, um, I just want to call him Jake, but Jake is the lawyer. They're still working on George's case, um, trying to find the real killer. Since it's, you know, it's been determined that he was not the one that actually killed, uh, what's her name? Tess. But they found, like, they got a hit on DNA. So they, uh, it wasn't the actual person, but somebody in that family. So, oh, excuse me. So they're getting close to finding out who killed Tess. And I think that was it. Yeah, there was nothing else to this episode. Um, I'm about to go watch episode nine. I started watching it last week, but I had to cut it off because um, me and my family was doing something. But I know that it involves that real case of that young black man where they cut his dreads like right there on the floor of the school so he could wrestle. So they uh bringing that into this episode. Um I think that's it. So yeah, let me go so I can watch that episode and do another review for you guys. Peace.